years, not the rhino. It's an evolutionary success story 50 million years old. The proof lies in North America. Here much of that story unfolded, and here the fossil record is most complete. I think we have to respect the rhinos. These animals have been with us on the earth for millions and millions of years. They've come in a huge variety of shapes and sizes. They've managed to live in environments from tropical jungles to the Arctic tundra. Uh, I think they're an evolutionary masterpiece. If the modern rhino is a masterpiece of evolution, where is the original design? The answer lies buried in the distant past, far back in the age of the dinosaurs. The African rhino has walked the earth for only three million years, yet its heritage stretches back to creatures more ancient. 65 million years ago, the world was coming to an end for the dinosaurs. One of the last was Triceratops, a plant eater that grazed across the plains of North America. Armed with three mighty horns and a crest as big as its head, it looked so forbidding that even T-Rex might hesitate to attack it. Its success lay in its design. It had a round body, so it was hard to attack. It had a cast iron stomach, so it could eat almost anything. It had short legs, so its center of gravity was low. And it had eyes set high on its head, so it could graze and keep watch at the same time. Triceratops was the rhino's prototype, but a whole line of knockoffs would follow before the first true rhino emerged. 30 million years ago, after extinction killed off Triceratops, the first proto-rhino appeared in Egypt. Arsinoetherium preserved traits from Triceratops, two mighty horns and four stout legs. Meanwhile, in North America, a similar creature evolved, the Brontothir, or Thunder Beast. At two and a half tons and nine feet tall, it was the biggest plant eater on the continent. But nature's attempt to build a rhino now suffered a setback. The climate grew cooler and drier, and forest turned to grassland. Unable to live off the land, Brontotheres disappeared. Even as they were dying out, their replacement was evolving. Hyracaeus. It seemed a step backward. It was slender, not stout, long-legged, not short, and no bigger than a Great Dane. Yet it was the first true member of the rhino family. Over millions of generations, it would spawn 200 species of rhinos, from the miniature to the monstrous. Paraceratherium ruled Asia 30 million years ago. Today, it dominates the research of Don Prothero from the Occidental College of Los Angeles. One of the most amazing of all the extinct rhinoceroses was a gigantic beast known as Paraceratherium. This animal lived in Asia from about 15 to about 35 million years ago, and it towered above the landscape, weighing in at about 20 tons and measuring about 18 feet tall at the shoulder. It was so huge, it was about the size of many of the dinosaurs, and it had a lifestyle probably much like the giraffe, if you can think of our rhinoceros equivalent of a giraffe, living off the leaves of the tops of trees. Although a far cry from Hyracyrus, Paraceratherium still preserved the blueprint. 
Within its huge legs, it retained the long limbs and slender toes of its little ancestor. Paraceratherium was the largest mammal ever to walk the earth. Even the elephant was only one-fifth its size, and only Paraceratherium ever grew as big as a dinosaur. Like the dinosaurs, it too disappeared. But the rhino design lived on. 22 million years ago, the world went through another change in climate. In North America, dense forests shriveled up, giving way to open country, the American savanna. Unable to stomach the new vegetation, many creatures died out. Yet one thrived. Monoceros had teeth like grindstones and a cast iron stomach. It also sported a pair of horns, just like Brontotheer. Like its predecessor, Monoceros was eventually tested by nature. Around 19 million years ago, North America's warming trend heated up. The land was parched by an endless summer. Across the continent, thirsty creatures migrated in one direction, toward water. As more animals gathered, the herds grew larger and the water holes grew smaller. When the last drops dried up, the forebears of the rhino fell dead alongside primitive relatives of the horse and the pig. In 1904, one such graveyard was discovered in western Nebraska. Agate Springs is the largest find of monoceros bones in the world. Paleontologists estimate that 16,000 of these little rhinos died here within just a few acres. How so many bones came to lie in one place was once a mystery, until it was solved by a paleontologist from Nebraska University's museum, Bob Hunt. The most important clue in helping tell us something about how the rhinoceros came into the waterhole setting is that the teeth can be grouped in discrete age classes. We have jaws that have teeth representing babies, 